We continue now at the top of Daf Samech Vavam and Bezin Maseches Yivamus. This is Yivamus Daf 66b. The Gemara is now discussing Nichsei Tzon Barzel, which are property that the that the wife brings into the marriage. And the halach is whatever they were worth at the time that the marriage began. So let's say when the marriage ends, let's say there's a divorce. So the husband owes her that exact value. If those items gained in value, then he gets the gain. If those items lose in value, so then he takes the loss. And so the question on the previous summit was, let's say she asks at the end of the marriage when they, get, when they get divorced, she asks for the actual property back. Is she entitled to the property or the husband can say, no, I'm just going to give you the money. I'm just going to give you the value. So Rav Yehuda says, Hadin Ima. Rav Yehuda says she is correct. She can ask for the actual kalim back. As we mentioned again, if the kalim go up in value, she's still going to owe that extra money to the husband, but she's entitled to the actual kalim. If Rabbi Ami Omar had din imo, and Rabbi Ami says, no, the halach is with him. In other words, he's allowed to keep the kalim because he's responsible for the achrayas. It really means that he's really the owner of these kalim. He can keep them, and again, he'll just pay her back the original value. And the Gemara explains, Rav Yehuda Omar had din imo. Rav Yehuda says the halach is with her. Mishum shavach beisavia did do have it because, again, this is the prestige, so to, so to speak, of her father's household. This was originally the kalim brought in from her father's household or the property brought in from her father's household. And she's entitled to have them back. Rabbi Ami, um, Rabbi Ami says, Hadin Imo, no, the halach is with him. Kevan do Amar Mar, since the master said, Imesu Mesulo, Vim Hosiru Hosiru Lo, this is what we said in the Mishnah, that if they die, the loss is his, and if they gain in value, the gain in value is his. Hoel v'chayi b'achro yusan. And we also said in the Mishnah that since he's chayiv in the achrayis of these items, yochlu, we said that that's why the avdei tzon barzel are allowed to eat shruma. Let's say you had the situation again of the almona l'koin gadol, or the grusha v'chalutza merit koin hadyod. So we said that the avdei tzon barzel can still eat shruma because they're considered to be his avadim and not her avadim. And so therefore it seems to be that he's the owner. And so the Gemara says, Amar of Safra, of Safra says, one second, does our Mishnah really say that he's the owner? Mikotani v'hein shalo, does it say that they belong to him? That's not what it says in our Mishnah. Ho'el v'chayev b'achru katani, the Mishnah just says that since he's chayev in their achrayis, meaning he takes any losses, let's say again, let's say they die, the loss is his, so therefore we said that they're allowed to eat truma. But really, maybe they don't really belong to him. And again, she's able to ask for the actual items back should the marriage end. But the Gemara continues, But is it really true that any time there's a chi of achrayis, that entitles to truma? Because what we're really arguing right now, according to Rav Safra, is that since the husband is chayiv in the achrayis of the avde, it's on barzel, so those are vodim are allowed to eat truma. But we don't find in other places that achrayis is enough to allow someone to eat truma. But we learn in the Mishnah. Yisrael shasachar param mikohen. Let's say, for example, a Yisrael rents a cow from a kohen. Hareza yachilena karshine truma. He's allowed to give it. He's allowed to feed it karshine truma because it really belongs to the kohen. Even though the Yisrael has achrayis, that's nothing. And kohen shasachar param Yisrael. Let's say the other way around, the kohen rents a para from a Yisrael. Afal pishem mizono seha alav. Even though he's the one providing the mizonos, now the renter has to feed the animal. Lo yachilena karshine truma. He's not allowed to feed it karshine truma because this is a cow that belongs to a Yisrael. So you see that the Achrayis alone is not enough to say that you are. it's as if you're the owner and therefore it's going to follow you. So in other words, for the Kohen, if he's renting from the Yisrael, we don't say since the Kohen has Achrayis, suddenly the Parah can have Truma. But the Gemara says, is this, is this really logical? This is not a good proof at all. In this case, you're talking about a renter. So a renter is Chayv in Genev of Yaveda. Fine. But but when you're a renter, you're not chayv in all achrayis. Let's say an accident happens. Let's say it weakens. It goes down in value. A renter is not chayv in any of these of those cases. And as a, as a matter of fact, the Gemara says, "Hello, dam If you really want to compare a case of achrayis, look at the safe of that Mishnah. The case over there was as follows: Yisrael shasham param lo yachilena kashine truma. Let's say have a, have a Yisrael that evaluates the the actual par from the kohen. He's not not allowed to give it truma. Avul Kohen Shasham Param Yisrael, but the other way around, if a Kohen evaluates the value of the Parah from a Yisrael, meaning he takes full Achrayis on the Parah, Yachilana Kashine Truma. When you have full Achrayis, on the contrary, you could feed Truma, and it would be the exact opposite proof. This would prove in this would prove that it's indeed true that Achrayis alone is enough in order to, to, to determine these halachas of who eats Truma. And as Rashi over here says, Avul Kohen Shasham Param Yisrael Bidamim Kishasachar. In other words, when he rents the cow, he figures out exactly what it's worth, and he says this 
this is the amount I will give back no matter what. He says, I'm going to give it back this amount of, of value. So that if there's going to, it's going to weaken or there's going to be an onus. So I'm going to give you this value no matter what. So in that case, again, it's full achrayis. And we say if it's full achrayis, that is enough. Let's say it's a Kohen takes full achrayis to, to, to feed the, uh, to feed the parakashine truma. And so the Gemara continues, Yosef, Rabbi of Rav Yosef, Bishili Pirke de Rav Nachman, Rabbi and Rav Yosef were sitting at the end of the shear of Rav Nachman, Vyasvi de Kamri, and they sat and they said as follows Tanya Kavasi de Rav Yehuda, Vitanya Kavasi de Rav Yami. We have a Brisa that supports Rav Yehuda, but we also have a Brisa that supports Rav Yami, and the Gemara explains Tanya Kavasi de Rav Yami, we have a Brisa that supports Rav Yami, Avde Tzon Barzel, let's say you have these servants of Tzon Barzel, Yotzin Bishain Vayan Laish. So then they go free, let's say the tooth is knocked out or the eye is knocked out by the husband. In other words, indicating that the husband is the actual owner, like Rabbi Ami says, but not for the wife. The wife is not considered the owner, so if she knocks out the Shein Vayin, the Avodim are not going to go free. So that supports Rabbi Ami's position that they really belong to the husband. And Tanya Kavasi de Rav Yehuda, we have a Brisa that supports Rav Yehuda. Hamachneses Shum Labalo, again, a woman brings in Nechse Tzon Barzal into the marriage. Imrod Sahabal Limchor, if the husband wants to sell it, Lo Yimchor, he can't sell. Velo, not only that, Elafilu Hichnes La Shum Mishalo, even in a situation where he brings in Shum Mishalo from his own, Imrod Sahabal Limchor, if the husband wants to sell, Lo Yimchor, he's not allowed to sell. In other words, let's say he brings it into the marriage, but he says it's going to be Nechse Tzon Barzal, it's going to have the same status. That is the same status. It's considered like it belongs to her, and he's not allowed to sell the property. And the Brisa continues, Machrush name le Parnasa. Let's say either of them sold something that they weren't supposed to sell for Parnasa purposes. Rashi says that's just a normal situation. You would sell Kalim for Parnasa, but it could be for any purpose. Zeho Yamaisa Lefne Rabbishim Mengamliel. This was an incident that came before Rabbishim Mengamliel. The Yomar, and he said, Habal Motsim Yad Halakuchos. The husband can take it back from those who purchased it, meaning that sale is not going to be good. Let's say the husband sold, sold Nechzet Son Barzel, for example, when he wasn't really supposed to because the the wife is the owner, that sale is not going to be good. Rashi over here says, Habal Motsi Lomi Boy Dimachar who below died. The Rashi says, For sure, you don't even need to say. Let's say he sold the Nichse Tzon Barzo without her knowledge. Vameis and he died, or Gershri divorced her. Tehi Motsi Amiyad Halakuchos. She certainly can take it from the Lakuchos because, again, according to this Brysa, she is the owner. He had no right to sell. But the Brysa is going even a step further. El Afilu Mesa he. Let's say even she died. So now she's not even collecting because she died before him. Who motzi miyad alakuchos? Even in that case, he's allowed to take it back from those who bought it. The mechira lav mechira havoi, because the point is, the mechira was nothing. It's not a good sale. Calls man she kayemis when she's alive. She really is the owner of that property. And again, that's why this particular brisa supports Rav Yehuda's position that she's actually the owner. And the Gemara continues. Amar Rava, Amar Rav Nachman. Rava says in the name of Rav Nachman, halacha Rav Yehuda. The halacha is like Rav Yehuda. In other words, she really is the owner, and she can demand back the actual kalim. Amar le Rava. Rav Nachman. So then Rav said to Rav Nachman, "Vatanya kavasi Rav Yami." But didn't we have a brisa that supports Rav Yami? Afal gav the Tanya kavasi Rav Yami. Mistaver time of Rav Yehuda. But the Gemara says even though there is a brisa that supports Rav Yami, still the logic, the reasoning of Rav Yehuda makes sense. Misham shavach beisavia because of the fact again, this is the prestige of her father's household. She really should be considered the owner of the property. And the Gemara continues, Ha'hi itasa, there was a woman, Da'ayla le'la gavra itztela demilsa b'chsubasa, that she brought into the marriage a robe of fine wool, and it was written into the ksuba, meaning again, it was nichseit son barzel. So shachif, so then the husband died, and shaklui yasme a porsua misna. So the yasom and the orphans, they took this robe and they spread it over the dead body. They used it as shrouds for the burial, even though, as we just said, really it belongs to her. It should go back to the wife. So Amar Rava, so Rava said, Kanya Misna, the fact that it was given to the, the mace, to the dead, so that's like an acquisition. You're no longer allowed to get any benefit from this, and she's not able to use it. She's not able to benefit from the, from the, ro- from the robe. And so the Gemara continues, Amar Le Nani, Bereder of Yosef, Bereder Ravler of Kahana. So Nani, the son of Rav Yosef, who was the son of Rav, said to Rav Kahana, But didn't Rav say in the name of Rav Nachman, Halachik Rav Yehuda, that Halach is like Rav Yehuda, meaning she really should be entitled. It's not their property. It's 
it's her property and she should get it back. So Amar Lay, so he said to him, No, Milo Moder Rav Yehuda doesn't Rav Yehuda admit the Mechusar Guvaina, that it's not really hers until she collects it. It's lacking collection, so she hasn't collected it yet. Vekevan the Mechusar Guvaina, now since it's lacking collection, Birushusekai, so it's really still in his Rishus. And in other words, they were able to render it, Asr Bahana, by using it for the mace. As Rashi over here says, Kanya Misna, Tachrichi Hamais, Isure Hanoi. In a general halacha, the shrouds of a mace are Asr Bahana, Kehektish. They have the exact same status as Hektish. And he said, Milo Moder of Yehuda, the Mechusar Guvaina, Afa Gavda Din Ima, meaning even though she's correct and she really is allowed to collect this property, it's hers, Moduhu, but he admits, Rav Yehuda admits, the Cholkama de Logav Sinu, that if she hasn't collected it, Mine from him, Labrishu Sakaimi, it's not in her, in her possession. El Shibuda Bialma is all she has is a lien on the property. Let's say there's going to be an onus, let's say there's going to be a loss, so then they're going to be chayiv in the achrayis. And since they are right now in the possession of the Asomim, she just has a lien on that property. So so now they've essentially made it hektish. In this case, they didn't actually make it hektish. They use it as shrouds for the burial, but it's the same basic idea. And therefore, that takes away the lien. And now they'll owe money to the uh, to the woman, to the to the wife, but they're not going to have to give back the actual property. And the Gemara continues, This is Rav according to his psak halacha, the Yom HaRava, because Rava says hektish chametz when it comes to hektish, which is like our case, and also chametz, these are all things that can undo a lien on property. Rashi over here says, Rava letai me hektish davka kedushas haguf ki agavna. It's got to be kedushas haguf, meaning you're sanctifying the actual item. Aval kedushas damim lo, but if you sanctify it just for its value, that wouldn't be enough. And then it says over here, chametz ovid kochavim shehil ves Yisrael. The case would be as follows. Let's say a non-Jew lends a Yisrael al chemzo, and he lends him money, and he does it on the chametz. Uh, so after Pesach, it's going to be Asr Bahana. Because the Isr of Chametz can actually come along and undo the lien that the Ovid Kochavim has on the property. In other words, over here, the Nanju lent money to the Yisrael, and there was uh, some Chametz that was designated that the Yisrael said, if I'm going to pay you back, I don't have money, this Chametz is designated to pay you back. So the Ovid Kochavim has a lien on the Chametz. But then Pesach comes along, and you have the Isr on the Chametz on Pesach. There's a the Chametz is Asr Bahana on Pesach. So therefore, that actually undoes the lean of the the lean that the Ovid Kochavim has. Now, what it says over there in the Mishnah and Kolsha that it's Mutter Bahana. Rava Muki Lahasam Kishirinu Etzlo Shenasnu Yisrael Bebeis Hashal Ovid Kochavim. That's in a specific case where the Chametz was actually put already into the house of the non-Jew. Dahulo Mechzer Guvaina, because in that case it doesn't lack collection. But in any case where the non-Jew hasn't collected it yet, so the Isr Chametz can come along, just like in this case the uh, idea of Hektish can come along, the Yisr Chametz can also come along and can undo the lien that the uh, that the lender has, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Samech Zayin Ahmed Aleph.